probably the number one issue that keeps better golfers from improving is making an error in the transition. That is the very small window of time that separates the backswing and starts the downswing. It can really be frustrating and keep you on a plateau for a long time. So if that's you, then keep watching because right after this we're going to delve a little bit into different varieties of errors and what causes them, how to fix them as well. So stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit longer and straighter drives, longer and straighter all the way to the green. If you're on the same journey, then by all means consider liking this video at the end, subscribing, leaving a comment down below. Don't forget to find me on Facebook and Twitter. So I believe that most transition errors fall into one of two categories, and that is one, errors of the pivot, and number two, errors of the arms and the club handle. Let's get into the first one. So to better illustrate the errors of the pivot, I've got my chair here. I've used it in a lot of videos. If you watch my channel, see, I like to use this to help train the pivot. Um, we can also use it to illustrate some of the errors that uh, better golfers make that really messes them up in transition and gets their backs or their downswing off to a a really poor start from which it's very difficult to recover well. Uh, not a lot of time once you've hit that transition, you're in the slot and you get to impact. I mean, we're talking about maybe a tenth or two of a second. The club's got its momentum and it's going to be nearly impossible to reroute it back to where you want it to once it gets off a good track. So you're kind of stuck with the flight path and you're stuck with different errors in um, in contact and ball flight that seem to just haunt us for years. So let's talk about the first uh, pivot issue that really messes up the transition and that is a hip action where you just turn flat like this. So you might get to the top really nicely here even despite having this hip action but usually what comes with this twist is then the early extension, which tends to limit our turn of our torso as we hit, uh, start down. And you see what, was, it, it, what happens here is the handle of my club, since I'm not turning, it tends to, I'm just tilting, the handle of my club tends to go more vertically. Um, we're looking for, if you can imagine a two dimension line, a two dimensional line like this, of course, it's just a trick of the camera uh, from your perspective, but you can see how instead of that more diagonal line, I've got less horizontal component to this and more vertical component to this. The club is dropping below here and you see the, the shaft of the club is gonna tend to stand up this way. So because of the handle has a lot of uh, vertical just naturally the club head wants to line up and it wants to steepen or get more vertical with the, the shaft. Then of course you've got the opposite pivot or the, say the over the top action that really messes the handle up too far above something like this, let's say. Let's say you've gotten to the top here and you're in good shape, but your first move is going to be to Instead of making a lateral move as you're turning, I'm going to forego the lateral move and just turn my hip back into the wall like I'm spinning in a barrel this way. And you see what that did is it put too much horizontal into the club handle this way. Uh, sends my right shoulder over the top this way. So I'm just kind of spinning in a barrel level and now what happens, uh, my transition has now set me up for the down and across pad and we could get pull slices and shanks from there. Um, probably gonna have to really stand up the shaft through impact after that, this way, in order to get it back down to the ball again. So those are the two common um, pivot errors that cause 
the transition to get a little bit funky. Now you can also make arm errors that uh, kind of take the place of the pivot error. A lot of people just, for some reason or another, they reroute their arms. So again, let's just uh, say for a second that you are in really good shape here at the top of the swing and maybe for some reason or another you learned how to drop your arms let's say even your pivot is good but your arms tend to drop in the transition this way so again we'll have too much vertical early which is going to give us too much horizontal late or outwards this way and all of a sudden we have handle issues going out to right field and up so if you ever struggle with pushing and hooking the ball it's one thing you might want to take a look at when you film your swing from down the line like you're looking at me if the arms were to kind of drop this way kind of underneath this diagonal line like this it'll be really hard after this even if it's just a little bit to get that handle working back around low and left upon the exit, you're really going to end up recovering by going arm drop a little bit first. It's really going to get you stuck on the inside and you can see how I'm going to come really inside out and flip the club over generally. And it'll be very hard from here to try to recover back around my body and exit low and left. It just kind of goes against the grain at that point. Once you're in your transition and you've gotten the first six inches or so into the downswing, really all bets are off now. It's going to be really hard to make up a large difference. If there's just a tiny difference and you're just dropping a little bit above or a little bit below, you can kind of make, a, make that difference up coming into the ball. But better yet to be right on it with the handle path. So let me hit a few for you. We'll take a look back at them in slow motion. Uh, see what they look like. So a couple things you can see in the slow-mo as we look back at those swings I just showed you. Um, number one, you can see the handle of the club in transition really tracks um, a really nice arc back around me, which makes it really easy to naturally flow uh, around to the left again upon the exit. Um, I don't really drop vertically. I don't, don't crumb, come out. Um, I would say this is the result of a solid pivot that I've made um, and allowing my arms to be rather passive starting down. So I don't have any, uh, any pulling force, which is common in poor, tra poor transitions and that stands up the shaft. There's no over the top and there's no sagging of the arms underneath and, and a, maybe a vain attempt to, uh, to shallow the club the wrong way, which I've seen some people do is they get here in good shape and to try to get the club to the inside and shallow it, they force the arms down under the plane, um, which is not a good idea at all. A couple other really important keys that are gonna help you really solidify this transition from backswing to downswing are, uh, number one, to stay in really good tempo, which will give you just that little hint of pause at the top. Uh, so many golfers make, who are, who are good golfers, but they seem to be stuck on a plateau. They, they seem to make errors of getting a little, a little too quick uh, as they approach the top of the swing. And there's really kind of a, more of a violent change of directions um, coming down. And I think that makes everything just a little bit harder to time at the ball, especially when the pressure's on and I think they tend to get out ahead of it even more, get a little bit hyper. One last point I'll tell you is that it's a lot easier to make the transition solid if the backswing matches up. It doesn't mean that you need to have an absolutely perfect backswing, um, but you just can't make a backswing error that's so big. Um, for example, I'll give you an example of the pivot here. Uh, for example, if I were to just turn my hips flat like this 
and let's say that made the club come back to in and I had to lift it. The, the journey of the handle path going back and up to the top is simply not congruent enough with what you're going to be trying to do on the way down. It's going to be really hard once you're this far off the track to find that track and it's just not going to match up very well. It's not going to feel like it's, it's very fluid. Uh, when you're up and down the same wheel coming back down, everything feels more fluid and it seems like the club hit is a lot easier accelerate to a high speed effortlessly. So make sure that you're not making any enormous errors as you draw the club back because it'll be very hard to get back on the right track again. It's possible. We've seen it done. We've seen some, you know, Hall of Fame golfers, golfers who have done it, but it's going to take you a ton more golf balls and dedication and you're still going to be left with some inconsistency in my opinion. So hey, thanks again for watching. Thanks so much to Golf Development Complex for hosting me and giving you this beautiful scenery today. I really hope that watching this video will get you off of that plateau, give you some ideas and how you can formulate your next practice sessions and move on to the next level with your swing. Um, hey, and as always, if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I see you longer straighter down the fairway. Thank you.